I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This episode is brought to you in part by JLCPCB, maker of inexpensive, fine quality, prototype, printed circuit boards based on your Gerber files. For more information, go to jlcpcb.com or use the link in the text accompanying this video. I was asked about the difference between three different antennas, all three used both on HF and VHF and UHF. One, the Yagi, is common. The other two, the log periodic and the phased array, are rare in amateur radio. All three of these are gain antennas, that is, they all provide forward gain in one direction at the expense of signal radiated in other directions. Let's start with the Yagi. The Yagi Uda antenna was developed in 1926 by two Japanese professors. Here's a simple graphic looking at it from the top. It can have as many elements as you want. Though, if you use only one, it's really just a dipole. The way the Yagi works is to put an element, slightly longer than the driven element and called the reflector, on the side of the antenna opposite where you want the radiation. Then you can put one or more directors on the side of the dipole that you want the radiation to go. The directors are shorter than the dipole. The reflector and the directors are called parasitic elements, now in a good sense, in that they pick up energy from the dipole and then re-radiate it. The net of all this re-radiation is to beam the radiation mostly in one direction. Here's an animated graphic from Wikipedia that shows how the radiation from the driven element and all the parasitic elements lines up in one direction constructively interfering, whereas in other directions the radiation interferes with itself destructively, thus giving us gain in the direction of interest. Again, this isn't real gain, there's no amplifier involved here, because to create this gain you must rob radiation from other directions. Usually that's a perfectly good trade-off, and Yagis are popular both at HF usually at frequencies above 20 meters, and at VHF and UHF. So for the Yagi, think of a single driven element with a reflector and directors at play. It turns out that at HF, 40 meter beams are unwieldy and large. 20 meter Yagis are common, and combination 2015 and 10 meter Yagis, also common, as are configurations with even more bands. Yagis are also very common at VHF. This one is my Aero Electronics 146-4S, still sold for about $80 plus shipping, and it's a sturdy single band antenna. Now, uh, let's see if we can show the parts of it here. This end is the radiator. This is the driven element, and these are the two directors. Now, for the log periodic. At first glance, it looks like a Yagi, but it operates on a different principle. As the lengths get shorter, they are more closely spaced in a logarithmic fashion, as you can see in this Wikipedia drawing. And furthermore, all the elements are driven, not just one, all of them. The polarity of the driving current is switched for each element, creating the crisscrossing effect so common in TV antennas. In fact, this antenna was originally designed to address the problem of a single broadband antenna covering all of the VHF TV bands. And that points out the log periodic's great strength which is that it will provide some gain over a very wide frequency range. Although you do see them occasionally in ham radio, you don't see them much because ham bands tend to be narrow relative to the carrier frequency, so multiband capabilities are developed by using antennas having elements or tuning traps 
to segregate band activity to different elements of the antenna. There are some other wideband antennas used in ham radio, such as long wire antennas and their derivatives, such as rhombics or beverages. Those commercial and governmental organizations that use HF to make contacts over a wide range of frequencies will often use huge log periodic antennas, and I've seen some. Lastly, let's turn to the most interesting of the three, phased arrays, in which every element is driven by the same frequency signal, but with various phase delays for the different antennas. Because of the expense and complexity of phasing networks, these are not common in ham radio, though you do see them from time to time. The 20 meter collinear I recently reviewed is technically a phased array. A phased array consists of multiple antennas. This can be as little as two antennas, though four or more are more common. Fundamentally, all the elements are driven elements, but the phase difference between how the antennas are driven is what defines the resulting beam pattern. Now, a phase delay simply means that for a given carrier, the peak of the RF voltage arrives later when the phase is changed. It's actually fairly easy to phase four verticals using coax delay lines each a multiple of a quarter wavelength apart or so. By switching these around, the four element array can fire in any one of four directions. The beam is quite broad, so this covers most every azimuth. If you add lots more antennas, the phasing becomes far more complex because the beam width narrows. Reactive networks can provide phase delays, and these networks, consisting of capacitors and inductors, can be varied to change the phase. In the diagram, several antennas are located in a row. The first has zero phase shift. The second has a slight phase shift, which can be created as a phase delay. This goes on down the line, and the next is that a beam is formed in an off-center or off-axis direction. It's pretty cool, really. The military uses phased array radar arrays with thousands of antennas. When I was in the Air Force, I had the chance to tour one of the Air Force's largest phased array radar system. We could actually climb in sight of it. It was amazing. And the beam could be swept back and forth with no moving parts. Actually, the beam didn't even need to be swept. It could be pointed in one direction, then in another, and so on. So, I hope that's a somewhat illuminating description of these three types of antennas. Only the Aggie is common in ham radio. But if a log periodic falls in your lap, why not use it? Phased array receiving systems are used by fox hunters, that is, hidden transmitter hunting. I have a fantastic fox finder that is a two element phased array and it's very effective. Antennas are so much fun. Please check out www.dcastler.com support for various ways to support ham radio answers and ask Dave. Thank you for subscribing and clicking like. Until we next meet, being careful to use both feet when walking, 73.